Our next speaker for today is um, Catherine Bell of Tender Funerals uh, in, here in Canberra. And some of you might have seen Tender Funerals on Australian Story earlier this year uh, in the episode called A Community Undertaking. Uh, and they're a not-for-profit funeral service um, that uh, works around the philosophy that all of us should have access to meaningful and affordable funerals. So we're happy to have Catherine here to tell us about their work and um, what, what they do. So I'll throw over to Catherine now. Oh, thank you, C. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you for inviting us. I would like to start by sharing a video and um, C's got it queued up, ready to go. It's just a short little video that I'd like to share with you all. Once upon a time, we knew about death. We buried our own. We took care of them. We knew what to do and how to do it. How to perform this last sacred act for those we love. But somewhere along the way, we forgot. We let death become commercialised. We outsource death like we outsource so many things in life. But we lost something along the way. We forgot that being present with death is so much a part of what it means to be alive. Now we're bringing death back. We believe we're ready for it. We know death can be life-changing. We believe we're brave enough and strong enough to deal with it. And at Tender, we're changing the culture of funerals, letting them be what they were always meant to be, a chance to honour, to grieve, to heal, to love, to say goodbye in your own way, in your own time. Death is so much more than a transaction. It's a transformation. Thanks, C. That video sums up the tender story pretty well, the reason behind tender starting. And the story of tender started around 2012 down in Port Kembla when the community down there started to question why. Why is it so expensive? Why does it have to be so detached? Maybe there's a better way. And so the community started to look into just what they needed to do to be able to operate as a community not-for-profit funeral home. It took them about four years to establish, and in 2016, the Port Kembla tender started. And with that, what we saw was a shift in culture. This was pretty magical. To see people start to ask for more meaningful service, to be able to be more creative with their service, to be able to arrive at the funeral home and say, this is who we are and this is what we need and to have that need met without having to go into debt. That was a pretty spectacular change. And the way that Tender was able to do this was by looking at what things actually cost and being able to pass on only those costs. But there is an additional fee of $250, which if families can afford it, they're invited to, to pay in addition to the cost. And that $250 goes into a benevolence fund, a pay it forward fund, if you like. And families who can't meet the cost of the funeral can then be supported by that fund. It's an absolutely beautiful model. And what Tender Port Kembla found was that those families who could afford more were putting in more than $250 because they were still getting a, a funeral that was more affordable than through standard funeral homes. But what they really loved about the Tender model was that they could pay it forward. They could meet their own needs, but they could help others meet their needs. And the other thing that Tender was offering was volunteer opportunities. So the way that we can keep the costs down 
is by bringing in volunteers to, to support the paid um, funeral director and staff that are the, the full-time staff. And they can uh, support the, with the driving of the vehicle, the picking up, supporting families to wash and organize the, the make the arrangements for the service. They can also help with the end of life um, time as well. So if we know that a family is supporting their loved one at home to die, um, we have some death doulas who are volunteering with us to help, help them to not only die well at home, but to stay at home for up to five days, which is the, the legal um, allowance. Um, and they can then uh, connect with their our person and let go. And so we know that psychologically, if we can spend time with the dead person, our brain accepts the death um, more readily. There's no what if, there's no maybe. We, we can see that the person has, has left the building, if you like, and, and it makes that grief um, a, a easier. So what we um, also try to do with Tender is offer uh, seminars such as uh, funeral um, planning seminars, but also the advanced care directive. So working with the um, HCCA and palliative care and all the different organisations that we're building connections with through Canberra. And if we've missed anyone and you're here today, please get in contact because we want to, to capture everybody. Our plan is to ensure that the community can learn as much about the dying process and the death care process so that they're prepared when the time comes. So here in Canberra, the place that we're up to now, once we, yeah, once we got the opportunity to put our hand up and bring Tender to Canberra, it was the easiest yes. And then it became the biggest challenge we've ever met. So the, the tender bit is the easy bit. It's the finding a building that's become the hard bit. And the Canberra, the Canberra um, property planning um, situation is like an onion. There are a lot of layers and it's a little bit stinky. <laughs> it's like trying to get through it all has been quite the challenge. And um, we're pretty much restricted to Fishwick in terms of um, zoning, which of course then means it's a pretty industrial kind of space. We have actually got a million dollars in funding uh, from the Snow Foundation, Proza Foundation, Braidwood Community Bank, the community, hands across Canberra. We are really well supported. A million dollars, that's so much money. We just need about a million more. And we'll be <laughs> and we'll be set. So we're in the process of trying to secure that gap because we've identified a property in Fishwick that ticks all our boxes, would allow us to provide seminars, to provide enough space for the growth that we anticipate we will see very quickly. We need a mortuary on site so that we can care for the person on site and that their family has access to their person at all times. We need a room for families to, to help with washing and dressing or a viewing room. We really want a garden because the psychological well-being of the community matters and somehow being near nature makes a huge difference. Being able to see the sky, smell plants, be a part of that. And that gives us another avenue for volunteering. Not everybody wants to be involved with the body, but they do want to be part of the community. And so they can help with the gardens and we can have workshops such as one we've got coming up um, later this month, which is a shroud making workshop where we've got a special, uh, a beautiful artist coming along to show us a special technique for dyeing fabrics using um, or, you know, organic materials. So there's some information about that on our website. And we want to be able to have a coffin club where you can make your own coffin and that shoulder to shoulder support that comes through not having to directly talk about the issue of death, but to still be able to confront it and come to terms with it. And so we've identified a, a brilliant property and, um, you know, fingers crossed, we can find the, uh, the funding gap for that. The other thing we're trying to do is uh, get the ACT government on board, which has been a challenge, partly because the current community facility buildings are not in the right zone. 
And for every building that they have, there is several community groups who are needing somewhere to, to be. So that's been a bit of a challenge. We are also looking across the border into Queanbeyan and trying to work with the Queanbeyan Council to, to find a property. Because ideally, we can find a property without having to buy it. That would be perfect because every cost we have needs to be passed on. So we're at the point of trying to minimise our costs so that we can keep the average cost of a funeral to around the four and a half to $5,000 mark. And one of the, that's, a, that's an all bells and whistles funeral. Uh, the comparative current average in Canberra is around seven and a half, and that's if you're having a cremation. Uh, but cremation in um, Canberra will cost you around 1000 dollars but um, a burial in Canberra um, if you want a green burial you're looking at seven and a half thousand dollars just for the plot if it's in the lawn cemetery it's closer to ten thousand dollars if you need to be in the mausoleum you're looking at twenty thousand dollars so that's a lot of money um, and that that's just for the the place where the body's going to be and then of course the other costs around the, the funeral include transport um, storing of the body and the paperwork that goes around that and then of course if you want to have a massive party there's no limit to how much you can um, spend but what we at Tender will pride ourselves on is being able to allow families to have the most meaningful approach they can without having to go into debt so fingers crossed this property works out and we will be operational early next year. But otherwise, I've got a call for action for people who are listening today who maybe they know something, maybe they know someone who might know something to help us to secure that building. Either you've got a million dollars sitting around, which would be fabulous, or um, you know someone uh, who uh, could help us to secure a property. And, um, and then once we're established, Oh, it's just going to be magnificent. Can you imagine everyone coming together to embrace death, just as the little video um, showed, when we can connect with death, somehow we live more kindly, we live more fully, because when we recognize that we are mortal, and that those around us are mortal, we tend to choose kindness more. And that's a pretty beautiful goal. So that's, that's me in a nutshell and Tender in a nutshell in Canberra. And I would love to open it to a conversation because I imagine there's a lot of questions out there. Yeah, thank you, Catherine. Uh, let's throw it open to questions. Have folks got any? Any hands up? Otherwise, I've got a couple. I thought I saw some movement, but... Oh, good. Uh, I've got one of the questions that came in from uh, our registrations. Um, have you got any advice for planning funerals for parents who haven't got any uh, superannuation or savings to go towards it? Yeah, this is a, this question. We actually get this a lot. We've been fielding quite a few phone calls as well from people who are wondering about the cost um, so along the line of a prepaid funeral or how can we how can we make these arrangements or what if the family member dies unexpectedly and um, the funds aren't there um, so in this particular scenario we know that death is coming and we know that the estate might not have the funds what are the things we can do to prepare for that so one of the things that families in that situation can do is consider um, what might be in the estate if if there's property in the estate that they can um, use to cover the cost of a funeral uh, uh, otherwise there is the possibility of putting some money aside if the parents are not in a position to be able to do that then maybe other members of the family can create a special account with the bank and so usually if you go into the bank um, you can create an account that has very limited fees on it for the express purpose of a funeral savings account. And this is a more secure way to do it than using, say, funeral insurance, which um, if you've been watching the news this year, you'll see that a very major insurance product collapsed earlier this year, which has left 
thousands of people in a very difficult circumstance. So Tender is working with the big banks on a new product, which should be out towards the end of this year, which is a special savings product rather than an insurance product. And the idea is that people can put money into that account when they can, as much as they can, until it gets to a maximum of $5,000. If they were to die before it reached the $5,000 and they were eligible, there will be a benevolence fund sitting underneath that. So it's been a long time in, um, in the process to build this up because obviously, as you can imagine, the philanthropy underneath that fund um, needs to be quite substantial. And um, they're trying to work out who will be eligible. So originally it was aimed at Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, um, and then it, um, in, in response to the collapse of those insurance um, schemes, it, um, they're trying to extend it into all low income people who, um, who fit that bill. Um, because it's not fair that people miss out on a meaningful service. So what we're seeing is an increase in people using um, a direct cremation service, um, which can be two and a half to three thousand dollars in Canberra and a lot of the services actually pick up your person but then take them to Sydney for the cremation and then they post the ashes back it's a no connection very basic service literally pick up person do some paperwork cremate person send back ashes once you've got the ashes you can actually create a memorial service that can be as magnificent and meaningful as you want. There's no limits because with the ashes, you can be anywhere. You don't have to worry about having permission for the body and you can scatter the ashes out in nature. Though um, from what I understand, there are a couple of places in Tidbinbilla where they are asking for no more ashes because it is um, such, a, such a popular spot. It's actually changing the soil composition and making it more acidic. So we do need to be conscious of uh, of that and one of the um one of the ways you can do that is just make sure that where where you're scattering them um isn't you know already too popular um you can create um paper mache pillows that actually float out to sea and so if someone has said they wanted to be scattered um out in the ocean um there's wonderful paper mache that um, dissolves into the ocean and can make it a bit more dignified than um, like my grandmother who wanted to go off um, Sydney Heads and um, and everyone just said, oh, that's terrible. We're going to throw you out into the wind and you're going to come straight back at us. And we'll all be going. <laughs> and she thought that was just hilarious. She thought that would be brilliant. But in the end, we used one of the pillows and sent her off to sea. And it was absolutely beautiful. The, um, the It slowed things down a little bit, which helped. There's lots of things you can do to create a meaningful ceremony without cost. So for those families who are facing a lack of funds, considering the direct cremation service can keep the cost down. And so then the family around them might be able to, um, between them, come up with the two and a half to 3,000 that's required to provide that service. Otherwise there are um, no interest loans to um, a value of up to $2,000 that can be applied for, um, which can be a solution if you needed to do that. Um, but if you can put a little bit aside um, going forward, um, it, it can make a big difference um, when the time comes um, because it will come. None of us are getting out of this alive so let's make it as beautiful as we can and um, uh, some people do also do crowdfunding perhaps you saw recently in the um, I think it was in the right act um, the Queanbeyan council supported a family um, for a, a Queanbeyan um, local character called Terry who was also known as the cowboy who who passed um, earlier this year with not a lot of money behind him. And so the family asked the community for support and they raised um, nearly $7,000 from the community, but um, did a very basic um, cremation of the body and had, had quite a chunk of money left over. So they put it on the bar at the Royal Hotel and invited all the people that, that had known him to come and, and celebrate 
um, their memories of him. And, and that was a beautiful community getting coming together. But unfortunately, we can't do that for every single person. Um, and so that's a story that, as wonderful as it is, um, I think people would get donation fatigue very quickly if every few months we were, were being asked to, to chip into a funeral. But for families, um, this might be something that happens once every few years. Um, sometimes they, they happen in quick succession, parents um, dying close together. So having um, five grand, you know, just sitting there, I think it's something like 20%. One in five people are actually able to do that. It's very, very difficult to come up with two grand in an instant um, for most people. So having a bit of a, a savings plan can help for that. Um, and uh, that's where um, having tender in the community makes a big difference as well, because ultimately then the cost of the funeral is considerably less. And we can help them to find out if they're eligible to Centrelink funds um, in the ACT, we also have a special fund which allows for up to $500, which actually isn't a lot. Um, it doesn't even cover the cost of a coffin. So, um, the, but it, it can help. It can, um, you know, tech can, tech, tech, tech can make a bit of a difference. So there are a few options there and Tender can help people to work out what they are. That's, that's the short version. <laughs> Certainly, there's there's a good few options there, and every little bit helps. Has anyone else got any other questions or even ideas um, around any of this? Yeah. Not seeing any hands. No, that's okay. Well, one from me. Um, do you have any advice for younger people who might not have? been thinking about this sort of thing much yet yeah this, it's it's um for most young people we're invincible right like it's never going to happen to us and so confronting the the our immortality can be really really tough there's some fabulous resources around there to um to warm us into it and it's called the death positive movement and one of the um, resources that i particularly like is the order of the good death which is um based in um california in in america and she's got a brilliant youtube channel and and following telling stories and asking questions and exploring the different um Thing, yeah, different av avenues around death and doing it in a way that's really accessible. So if you're just delving into it, The Order of a Good Death is a brilliant resource to, to explore. Is that the Ask a Mortician? Yes, uh, yes, that's right, with, with Caitlin Doherty. And she's, oh, she's brilliant. And she's written a couple of really good books as well. Ah, that's the one, thank you. Yeah, and yeah, her YouTube channel has thousands and thousands of hours of brilliant um watching yeah you will you'll get lost in that one easily we'll make sure to pop that in the email as well then yes absolutely and yeah, one of the um ways i came to um to death was through birth as it turns out so a lot of younger um well sort of you know entering parenting um type people who once have been exposed to the birth process often see the parallels with death as well both are very overly medicalized and outsourced and so for a lot of people once they see those parallels um, if they've been working as a birth doula it's not often um, unusual for them to move into the death doula world as well so which is the journey that I ended up taking I'd started um, you know we, on my journey as a mum um, starting to think, gosh, you know, it's so medicalized. Why does it have to be like this? You know, where's the home birth, you know? And then what about home death? Is that a thing? Can you do that? And starting to explore um, what the options were there. And then oftentimes it's when a grandparent is getting older, that is the first time that we're confronted um, with death as well. Uh, we might have had pets die, but somehow it's that first person um, and it, the death of a grandparent is actually really significant um, to to uh, to the young people. So uh, that can be a really beautiful opportunity 
for young people to explore death. And I think it's um, it's good to include children in conversations about death so that if they um, have the opportunity to extend, to attend a funeral, it, uh, it can be actually really good to allow them to be part of that process. A lot of people talk to us about how they, they were excluded from the death of a grandparent when they were younger and they never really understood what had happened and it was only later in their life that they realised they'd uh, miss, missed out on something. So what Tender oh, always does is gives family the opportunity to see the body um so it's just a, a standing offer um if you would like to help with the washing and dressing or to view the body the offer's there and your person's already always ready and waiting for you probably nine out of ten people say oh no 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 I don't think so they'll be fine but then they often call back a day or two later and say actually I, th I think I think I would like to and because tender slows that process down, um, we allow people that that chance to absorb what's actually happening. And so a lot of people have reported that um, being able to spend time with the with the body really helps. So if as a younger person, you get the opportunity to be involved in um, somebody's death, whether it's a grandparent um, or a friend of, of the family, um, Step, step into that space. It's not nearly as scary and, and confronting. It can be a really beautiful experience. Thank you. That's really valuable. Penne. Hi. Um, thanks for that, Catherine. So I might put a plug on our multicultural conversations tomorrow, and which includes a lot of the things about including family and children in the process of um, farewelling our loved ones. So if, if there is a link, see if we're still open and there's still spaces, I encourage you to attend that one and you can hear more about how to be family friendly in, in dealing with your loved one when they pass. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. Reg registrations have technically closed for that one, but you can email myself or um, Caitlin and we will uh, sneak you in. Don't worry, there's plenty <laughs> of spaces. Excellent. Well, unless there's any more questions, uh, then I'd just like to say a sincere thank you to Catherine for all that information and to Tara for, from before. And uh, if you want to learn any more about tender funerals, uh, you can head online to uh, tenderfunerals.com.au, throw in a slash camera if you want to find out the specifics about the Canberra situation. And uh, just so that we can keep improving these, we're going to pop a link in the chat to an evaluation form for these sessions. So thank you all for coming along. Thank you to our speakers. And uh, yeah, as we've mentioned, we've got a couple more of these coming up. Tomorrow is the uh, multicultural perspectives one that uh, lovely Penne will be hosting for us. And uh, then Thursday, we'll be talking about LGBTQIA inclusion in end of life sort of planning and care. So they'll both be quite good. And all of these will eventually end up on our YouTube channel for people who missed it. So keep an eye out for those. So thank you to everyone for coming along. And uh, I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon. <laughs>